Fargo ratings are an innovative new approach to rating eight ball players at pool. Running, jumping, swimming, golf, all have absolute standards against which performance can be measured. Pool like chess doesn't. Ratings at pool and chess must be based upon relative performance, upon who beats whom. Chess already has a good rating system. We introduce Fargo ratings to fill a void for eight ball. The mathematically sound approach ultimately is capable of rating eight ball players worldwide on the same scale. The approach is transparent and above board. There's no secret formulas. Information from every single game is used to update the ratings for both players, and the approach is naturally resistant to sandbagging. There's a lot of Greek letters that go into deriving the equations for the ratings update, and here are some of them. The important equation here, though, is the one at the bottom right. This is the equation that's in the computer or the spreadsheet that's used to update the ratings for both players after a game or match. Importantly, players, league operators, tournament directors need not know anything about what's on this page or anything about what's in the computer to use Fargo ratings. So what do Fargo ratings mean? At the top here, an 800, is essentially a world-class eight ball player like Shane Van Boning or Darren Appleton. At the bottom of the page here, a 100, essentially means you chose a random person out of a nursing home, gave her six shots of Patron and a pool cue. The rest of us fall somewhere in between. Working from the bottom, a 200 is a modestly coordinated beginner. A 300 is a beginner league player or maybe a typical basement player. A 400 is maybe an average league player, might run out first time at the table once or twice a league season. A 500 is a pretty good local league player, might run out 10% of the games. A 600 is a pretty strong player in the open division at BCA uh, Nationals, likely to cash, probably won't make it to the top 32, may get moved to Masters and then flounder. A 700 is a top regional eight ball player, a threat to run a six pack, uh, cash in the Masters division at BCA or VNEA. What's important about Fargo ratings is the difference in the rating between the two players. If two players are playing a race to nine and they have the same Fargo rating, i.e. a difference of zero, then playing nine to nine is a fair match. Both have 50% chance of winning the match. If the rating difference is 18 points and the weaker player goes to eight and the stronger player goes to nine, then that's a fair match, 50-50-50. Rating difference of 38, weaker player would need two games on the wire to nine to make it a fair match. Notice that as the rating difference gets down around 100, then the weaker player needs to go about halfway, about to four and a half games uh, to nine to make it a fair match. This is a general result. A rating difference of 100 means the weaker player wins games at half the rate of the stronger player. That's true whether it's a 300 playing a 400 or a 600 playing a 700. If they played 60 games, the weaker player would win about 20 and the stronger player would win about 40. Here's the basic formula that underlies all of this. It's the probability that player one wins a game against player two. I put it here to show you that that probability depends only on the rating difference between the two players. So here's an example. Suppose Joe, a 5'10", plays a single game against Mary, a 5'68". Mary's 58 points above Joe. And what that means is in the long run, Joe's going to win 40% of the games against Mary, and Mary's going to win 60% of the games against Joe. But they're playing only one game. Somebody's going to win. For that one game, Joe is expected to win four-tenths of a game. Mary is expected to win six-tenths of a game. Whoever wins the game will have won an entire game. In other words, exceeded his or her expectations. Whoever loses the game will have won zero games and will have fall fallen short of his or her expectations. For this reason, the winner's rating always goes up and the loser's rating always goes down. How much do Mary's and Joe's ratings change after that single game? Well, the computer knows another number about Mary and Joe that was something we call the robustness factor. Mary has a rating of 568 and a ro robustness factor of 210. Joe has a robustness factor of 1,000. What this means is that Mary's Fargo rating is based upon Mary having played 210 games in the system, and Joe's played 1,000 games in the system. What this means is that Joe's rating is more firm, and Mary's rating is, is less firm. Part of the rating update formula is that Mary's rating is going to change more quickly than Joe's. If Mary wins the game, then Mary's rating increase looks like this. It's 630 divided by Mary's robustness factor of 210 times the difference between the number of games Mary actually won, one in this case, and the number of games Mary was expected to win, 0.6 in this case. 
So Mary's rating goes up by 1.2 points from this single game. Joe's rating will go down, but it'll go down by less, maybe just a couple of tenths of a point because he has a much higher robustness factor. Just for qualitative comparisons, here's how I think Fargo ratings compared to some other popular rating schemes that people may know something about. NPL ratings are nine ball ratings in San Francisco. They're based upon a similar principle to Fargo ratings that were developed by Bob Jewett, and the correspondence is about like as shown. Below that is APA ratings. Uh, APA is the most populous uh, league system in the country. An APA 7 is approximately a Fargo rating of 560 and above, and a 6 between 500 and 560 and so forth. Consortium of people in Minnesota have worked hard to develop lists to get uh, common lists uh, for rating 8-ball players. Uh, those lists go as master, double A, A, B, C, and so forth. And master means essentially what master means for the BCA and VA, VNEA national master list. Uh, and this is the approximate correspondence with Fargo ratings. Uh, also in Minnesota, there's the M8 ratings, uh, the master advanced versions of those, and they look about like this. At Flatland Pool Leagues at Fargo Billiards and Gastropub in Fargo, North Dakota, we've been piloting Fargo ratings for the last eight months or so. We have 324 players in the system. Fargo ratings range from 238 to 706. We've had 13,000 eight ball games amongst these 324 players. The majority of players, as you can see, are between 300 and 500. So how do we use these Fargo ratings? There's at least three ways we've used them so far. One is we have league division team skill ceilings. This is similar to the APA 23 rule, but less draconian. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Another thing we do is we have a handicapped weekly eight ball tournament that uses Fargo ratings. And we have coming up next month, a regional restricted tournament. So this is a big eight ball tournament, $2,000 added, $50 entry, limited of 128 players. That's restricted to players with Fargo ratings of 560 and below. Our league has three divisions, the advanced, the intermediate, and the beginner or fun division. The advanced division has a team skill ceiling of 2100. So there's, they're all four player teams. The sum of the ratings for the four players cannot exceed 2100. So you can have two 500s and two 550s on a team, but if you have a 600 or a 650, that person is gonna have to be balanced out by a weaker player on that team. We use the, the ratings at, as they are at the beginning of the year. At the end of the year, a few teams are gonna go over the mark and those teams are gonna to have to either break up or move up to a higher division the next year. Our handicapped weekly eight ball tournament happens every Sunday at noon. Uh, it's a $20 entry, $100 added. We've had 26 players this, this past Sunday and that's typical. So there's five or $600 uh, in the pot and it's very highly handicapped as follows. This is chart 10, patterned after Bob Jewett's chart 10 in the NPL system. If two players in the tournament have a rating difference between 0 and 34 four points, they play even up. They play 5 to 5. If they have a rating difference between 35 and 62, they play the, the weaker player goes to 4 and the stronger player goes to 5. Look at the next gap, 63 to 80. Here's how this chart was determined. At 63-point gap, that game of 6 to 4 is a coin toss. The probability of each player winning is 50%. What that means is that if you show up with a rating difference between the two players in the middle of the range, say 75 points, then there's a small statistical advantage to the higher rated player. So overall, this chart has a small bias toward the higher rated player, but it really isn't anybody can win format. Amazingly, we've been running this tournament and we have no complaints about the handicaps.